Hello, everyone. Welcome to Across the Park podcast. Um, it's oh, days it? Wednesday. It's Wednesday. The transfer windows just closed. Um, me and Millsy thought we'd just get on and, and you know give a give a reaction to what can only be described as one of the the biggest debacles in in the club's history in terms of in terms of you know a lack of everything that you need from from a management management point of view. Um, Mills, uh, we've got the, the, the ticket at the bottom or the, the banner, if you like. Mm. Um, Everton, the only Premier League team not to sign a player, obviously, despite, despite selling on Gordon, um, sitting in 19th in the league with a new manager who really doesn't know what he's working with. We don't, we don't know how happy or unhappy he is with, with the group of players. But, you know, what, what's your reaction to the, the, the lack of events, I guess, and, and, and the mess, the utter mess that was, was last night? Um, suicide, lad. Suicide to, to, to go into the second half of the season, not even the second half of the season, because we're past that point, aren't we? The, the next time, you know, whatever number of games with with that squad, and not only that squad, but a squad that you know, whether you loved them, whether you hated them, it's considerably weaker now. You, you've got another a, a lack of another player who can try and create and try and get everything up the pitch and try and score a goal. Another one of those has now left up left the club. And not been replaced. It's it's not even like the hist- historically we're, we're replacing these players with worse. This mm-hmm. one's not even been replaced. We're considerably weaker now going into the second half of the season. I I have not got a clue what goes on at that football club. But what what I will say is I've probably gone a bit of a rant here, and it's my opinion, not not the opinion of the podcast. And we're, we're quite careful as a as a, as a you know as a podcast on what we do and say. So I and I say here will be my opinion. It's just a mess, Judge. It's an absolute mess. And I, and I think even the fans who who would like to believe it's not a mess are now, are now, going, are now seeing it for what it is. There's, there's no plan. There's, there cannot be a plan. It's the, what happened last night with, with the half ten tweets of trying to loan Ismail Saar and trying to go for Matata at Crystal Palace and Giroud, all these were after 9 pm. It's the equivalent of going to Asda on Christmas Eve trying to get your Christmas dinner ingredients. It's, there's no plan, there's no structure at all. The football, the inner workings of a football club, we must have knew as a football club because the, the contract was unsigned. So we must have known as a football club going into January, there's a very real chance that Anthony Gordon would leave the football club. So what, what you should do there is there should be some sort of plan B, plan C, plan D, plan E. As soon as that happens, which you see other football clubs doing all the time, by the way, you see this all the time, clubs who know what they're doing. When they lose a player, they're quick to react. We must have known it was happening. And even if with that stupid that we didn't know in, in November and December it was going to happen, we've had another week on top to go into yesterday and panic round. It looks like, to me, it looks like we had no money. I don't know about you. Yeah, well, I, I, I often refer to the, the club on podcasts and when I'm interviewed as a business because we are a business, a multi-million pound business. And even the smallest businesses, you know, try to plan for, you know, for the same events and and you know a, a very basic way of planning or reacting to events is communicating with other similar businesses and seeing if you can kind of try and work something out to, to tide you over the, the level of incompetence from a communication and and almost a networking point of view is beyond belief mm-hmm. so Kevin Thelwell and and, and and listen there's nobody else obviously the the owner and, and Bill Kemwright and, and and Denise Barabaxendale will, will get a lot of pressure and rightly so but Kevin Thelwell, as as you said, when when you know Deitch come in and, and when Gordon left, the spotlight was on him. Okay, what have you got now? Uh, have you got anything up your sleeve? Whether it's a, you know a couple of loan deals or whether it's you know a, a, a statement or whether it's it's some kind of su- support that you're going to put behind Deitch to help him to be able to get through this period. Nothing, absolutely nothing. And those those last minute desperation signings or them attempts last night. Were, were, were really poor. I mean, we have seen the, the tweets earlier in the day of people questioning, not only questioning him, but but saying that Steve Walsh and, and Brands done a fucking better job than him. Yeah. And and you can't disagree at this stage because at least he found something. Now, all right, spending the owner's money and not spending it, you know, um as as well as they could have done. Arguments is maybe is that their business, is it not their business? Their their business to find players that the club can realistically bring in. And we've done that with relative ease under under Walsh. We certainly done it with relative ease under Brands. What, what you know, finances aside. Now, in terms of whether we got money or not got money, that can only be on the, that board again. Yeah. I mean, if we haven't got money, 
then it needs to be made clear. Mashiri shouldn't be coming out making statements that we will be signing a player. That, yeah. we, that you know, Dyke shouldn't be allowed to be throwing himself under the bus to say we will be bringing two, three players before the window closes. He must be embarrassed at this stage yeah. already. And you know, he's the only one who'll come out with any shred of dignity because he, we know he's played no part in it. But you feel sorry for him already, don't you? You're going into Saturday's game with Arsenal and, and the fan bit. I, I never thought it could get more more weird and more fractured than it is. What's happening month by month and week by week and even day by day now is, is the fan base is, is just being rattled and rattled. And it is like you've seen that meme going around with Adam Deck, the press are saying, yeah. now, now go on talk sports. Yeah, I'm yeah. starting to think that's, that's real. I'm starting yeah. to think someone is actually doing this on purpose because for the owner to come out and speak to the fan advisory board, jazz at the fan advisory board, what, a week, 10 days ago. And for me, we, we didn't react to this on the, on the podcast. We've, we've, we've left it alone. But for me, a lot of it was waffle. It, it was filler. It was rehearsed. Not not jazz. Jazz is a great guy. I mean, I mean the, the owner, Mishiri. A lot of it was waffle. It was filler. And and it, it, he said what, you, what you've just said there. He said, he said the words, we need a striker. We will go and get one. Mate, we needed a lot more than a striker, but even if you just delivered the striker, if we're sitting on a, I, I don't know, who's, who's the guy with the Southampton, the striker? I forget his name, the, the, the big Pacey. Not not sure Trey Evans. 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 Yeah, yeah. So, so even if you bring him in and you say, look, we've, we've spent 18 million on him, <coughs> we've rolled the dice, like it, it, he may be in the ass or he may be a yellow bitch, you'd sort of say, okay, well, he's, he's told the truth. The owners came out to the fans last week and he's told the truth. He's, he's gone and got a striker. What this owner has done, whether he's meant to or not, he's lied, he's lied to the fan base. Now, one of the things that he hadn't been doing or not been accused of until this point was lying, that that, that was based on other people on the board. Ken Wright, for whatever reason, rightly or wrongly, Baxendale, rightly or wrongly, for whatever reason, they were branded the liars. It was on the banners. Machete mm-hmm. was sort of make things better, get rid of these people. We still are grateful for the stadium, but get rid of the board. He's now come out and lied to the fan base and his his face is now on all these banners last night. And rightly so. It is an absolute mess. It's it's a joke. And what's going to have to happen now is me, you, and everyone who's watching this, the supporters, are going to have to go and try and save this football club again. Why on earth is it on us to go and do what we've done again last season when we've got a billionaire owner who says we've got a competent board who are doing this to this football club. And what I said at the start of the podcast, in my personal opinion, and it might not be the opinion of Judgey or Pricey, the lot of you get out of my football club. I am done with you. You're lying to us. There's a smear campaign that Greg O'Keefe basically confirmed that you're selling things, you're giving stuff to the Athletic, trying to smear this fan base. The best thing this football club has got is the supporters. And yeah, we're yeah. going to do a job and get this football club over the line this season because you are messing it up. The lot of you... All of you, get out of my football club right now. Yeah, well, you've heard it, you've heard it there from Mills. I don't think I could, I could put it any better. Certainly couldn't put it any more passionately. Um, you, you said it's on the fans, Mills. There's no doubt about that. It's also on the manager. I mean, the, the, I don't think there's any any kind of strategy here to say, OK, well, we've had a chat with Sean Zaitch and he thinks he can get, you know, X out of this player and X out of that player and his confidence. I don't think that's the case whatsoever. I think I think Deitch was fully expecting players to come in. I think he, I'm certain that he he have told Kevin Thelwell on the board the type of players that he thinks he needs yeah. to get get a tune out of the squad. It hasn't happened. It, it is now firmly on his shoulders to try and squeeze something out of you know some blood out of this stone that is an aging, you know, tired at, at times, you know, um, effortless Everton squad. Um, I, I really words fail me to be in this position now to have lost Richarlison to have lost Anthony Gordon and to have had no one in, in that final third that's replaced them of any any real quality it is is baffling and, and it's it, you know I've, I've always been and I think Pricey we've both been the pragmatists on this podcast thing and you know what well let's look at this and look at that I'm struggling for anything here Price was a Deitch fan to be fair and he, and he, was, yeah. he was pleased with that I'm not. <clears throat> I wouldn't necessarily call myself a Deitch fan, but I thought he was the right man for the job. I don't think anyone, any manager on earth, could take this job on with any level of confidence, knowing that they can get results out of the, out of the team, given what we've seen in the first half of the season. Well, it's, it's back to the wall. I was in the as well. It's, it's back to the wall, and we're, we're going to have to, like I've just alluded to there, we're going to have to get down to the ground on Saturday. 
um, regardless of the protests, whether it's pre or post, during the 90 minutes for the next, I don't know, what we've got, seven home games left, is it? It's, it's on us again, lads. It's, it's on us. And talk about the manager there. May, maybe we've now got a manager who was better than the previous, and that, that gives us a, a, a bit better chance. You know, that's, that's to be determined, I suppose. How he sets us up going into these games, I don't know. This Saturday is, is, is tough. Maybe, in a weird way, it's probably the right team for Everton to play. A, a, a team where we don't, where, where yeah. the, we're not going to have to be on the front foot and the crowd won't expect Everton to score an early goal. The crowd will get behind Everton if they defend with their lives and they fight and fight and fight. Let me try and get set pieces around the box. Possibly that's, what, that's, that's the way we pick points up for the rest of the season. Because like you said there, there's not enough quality for Everton to naturally rise out this position now. It, it's going to take a connect, the connection that we had last year with the fans and it's going to take these players to, to give absolutely everything now. And I've, I've said there, this board are, are fit for nothing for me and I include the owner. Get out of my football club. But we've got to get behind this manager and we've got to get behind the decisions he's going to make. There's probably going to be some wrong ones because it's, it's natural that there will be along the way. <laughs> Between now and May, Judgy, me, you and the fans have got to give absolutely everything because the people above us certainly aren't. Yeah, we, we absolutely will. Um, <clears throat> just just the last last one for me, you <coughs> a few times there, but such a tough position to be in for the fans because, like you say, the the the, the boards or whatever are almost waiting for the fans to, to do something that's that's yeah. unforgivable, so to speak, that, that goes beyond what they've done. The fans' natural instinct is to get behind the players, but there's so much anguish, as, as you've expressed on here, and so much anger at, 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 and resentment of what the board have, have, have you know, turned this club into. How do you balance that? Do you know what I mean? Going the, go the ground, getting behind the club, you know, having a go- it, It's going to, you know, the, the um, Ashworth Hospital is going to be full at the end of this. <laughs> Everyone's going to lose their minds. Fans are having to turn up with a split personality. Yeah, and I'm, again, I'm 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 a very yeah, very. Yeah, I'm, I'm, well, Everton wives run for the lives. It couldn't be any more true at this stage. My wife in the background shaking her head, going, "Can't believe the club are putting us through this again." It's mad, and and, and you're right. But look, it's I've got to look look at myself. I'm I'm a, I'm a passionate, mostly reactionary Ever, Everton, you know, and I think it's on us to maybe, un, unless there's unless there's a real real problem with the players going forward, as, as long as we see them giving their all. I wouldn't really like to see scenes of that we had after Southampton where the, the you're not fit to wear the shares. I, I think a lot of it, that's built up anger mm-hmm. um, over a long period of time, and, and you know a, a lot of stuff from, from the morning built it built into that where the you know the headlock campaign came out, and I think everyone was really emotional that day. I think as Evertonians, we probably need to to oh, leave a little bit of that, yeah, leave a little bit of that at the door when we go to Goodison Park on, on Saturday and for the, for the remaining seven games and. If you'd have called the, the Brentford game last season, the, the, the third last game of the season when we got beat, they were clapped off. Um, United in the Cup, you, you, you were there and you clapped them off because you've seen Everton players trying and trying and trying. And as long as they're doing that, I think we've got to get we've got to get behind this team now. And I, I don't think it's... I'm on record saying I don't think there's a very good football team there. So what, what I do expect now is Everton, Everton players to, to fight for the badge because... We said last year we had that quote staring into the abyss. It's it's, it's like here we are again. And I think what well, we've both agreed on this show in the past. Like, if Everton Football Club do go down, the implications of of you know everything, whether it be the business side or what you see on the pitch and, and what you see you know growing at the dock, I think everything is is at risk. Then so it's buckle up, lads. It's on us again. Definitely. All right. Well, uh, that that's about all we've got time for. It's all we want to put out. It's all we've got to say. Really, I think Mills is right in terms of. Saturday being massive, every home game, every away game being massive. And uh, as long as we as the fans play our part, we're not going to stoop to the levels that this board and this management team has. Um, so let's get behind Dyke, let's get behind the players. Up the fucking toffees. <laughs>